Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about funny Hebrew expressions that we Israelis use all the time. Every language has funny expressions and sayings, but what's so incredible about Hebrew is because we come from so many different countries, we have a mishmash of languages, English, Arabic, uh, curse words in Russian, so it's really interesting to see the expressions that we use. Sometimes I find myself using one of these expressions and trying to translate it to English to one of my relatives or friends, and it's so funny how it really doesn't make sense. So let's get into the expressions. So the first one is chaval al hazman, which literally means a shame on the time. So the regular meaning of this could mean Oh, chaval al -azman. it's a waste of your time trying to fix something that just can't be fixed. Chaval al -azman. it's a waste of time. Now the interesting part is that this expression could actually also be used to mean the exact opposite. You could say, chaval al -azman. whoa, that's incredible, it's amazing. How was your trip abroad? Chaval al -azman. whoa, it was incredible. So how can you differentiate? I guess it depends how you say it. If you say, Oh, chaval al -azman. Or if you say, wow, chaval al -azman. The next one is actually originated from the Moroccan Jews. And the expression is kapara alaych. So what this means is, literally means, I love you. Okay, kapara alaych, I love you. But how did this expression even start? So kapara actually means atonement, uh, to repent your sins, right? We have Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. And what this means, a kapara, would mean that symbolically in the past you would take an animal or a chicken and it would be given as a sacrifice and it would help you atone for your sins symbolically. You know that the punishment that that sacrifice got was really a punishment that you were supposed to have and that is your kapara. So originally from Moroccan Jews, they would say kapara alik. I love you so much, I'm willing to be your sacrifice, I'm win willing to be that to atone your sins and to be a sacrifice for you. So another expression that's used is just saying kapara, oh kapara lea, kapara, kapara, I love her. Something small bad happens or something breaks in the house. A lot of people say, oh, you know, it's a kapara. It's a kapara, it's a way to atone our sins. Another expression that originated from Ladino is when we say kaparat avonot, okay? this. Something that happened, ah, oh, it's a kapara of our sins, kaparat avonot. I remember in high school, a lot of times something would break, a, a plate or a glass would break, and then everyone would say, ah, oh, everyone would clap hands and say, ah, oh, kaparat avonot, kaparat avonot. It's, it's, it's going to be help us repent for our sins. So in a way, it's actually good that this glass just broke. The next expression is chole alaich. What this means is I'm sick for you. So this actually means something good. It means, ah, oh, I'm sick over you. I, I love you so much. This could maybe have originated from the Tanakh. A lot of times you say, ahava, I'm sick with love. So you say, oh, I'm sick over you. And another, you could say also, Ani metalaich, Ani I, I die for her. The next one is para, para, which literally means cow, cow. So this actually means para, para means one at a time. Para, para. A lot of times I'll say to my coworker, okay, so we have this to do and we have to fix that and then we'll get to that. And then he says, Tamar, para, para. Okay, let's do one thing at a time. And where did this expression originate? So you could think of it like cows going to be milk. You know, they, they need to be in line. They need to be in order one at a time, right? You can't milk if there's a line, a row of cows, they need to go in one at a time. The next one is rosh gadol which literally means a big head. So what this means is someone who does more than is required, right? He thinks about things, he has, he thinks about what else needs to be done, he thinks about the bigger picture, and you could also have it as a verb, umagdil rosh, he's making his head bigger, meaning he does more than is expected, more than is required, he looks outside his small cubicle box and he does um, more than he needs to, and the opposite would be rosh katan, small head, or maktin rosh, someone who just, he does only what he needs to, he doesn't really look around, he just does what he's required to, and that's it. So a lot of people know about Israeli slang, sababa and achla. When someone says to you, how's your day going, how are you, you say, oh, sababa, achla, great. But what do you answer when 
you know, you don't have a great day, you're not doing so well. And Israelis, we're not phonies. We say the truth, we say things like it is. One thing we could say is, how are you doing? And we could say, ala panim, which literally means on the face, okay? On the face means I'm just, I'm not doing well, I'm not. Or we could also say, lo mashu, not something, which means I'm not doing that great, lo mashu. The next one is, oh, achalti ota, I ate it. What this means is, it doesn't mean literally, you know, I ate it, but it means, oh, I screwed up, I did something wrong, and now I have to deal with the consequences, something that, you know, really isn't good, really messed up, and you're gonna have to deal with the consequences, and you did something just wrong. I did something so wrong, I ate it. Ken, ken, lo, lo. Yes, yes, no, no. But the way we say it is, ken, ken, lo, lo. So this means, yes, yes, no, no. Make up your mind, okay? Yes, yes, no, no. Don't go beat around the bush and not make a decision. Yes, yes, no, no. Ken, ken, lo, lo. Decide. And the last one is, chai beseret. You live in a movie. So this means like, you're not being realistic. You're living in your own movie. You could say about someone, wow, he chaya beseret, or at chaya beseret. And what this usually means is you're being too optimistic about something. Usually, you know, you're not being realistic. You're being over optimistic. This is something that my husband says to me a lot because I'm a pretty optimistic person. And a lot of times I always think that the outcomes will be positive. And a lot of times he says, top, at chaya beseret, you live in a movie. I guess we all live in a movie. And if we already live in a movie, I might as well live in a movie that's positive and happy as much as possible. Hope you enjoyed these expressions. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. See you next time.